we started something last uh, uh, Sunday and um, we called it I don't know whether what did we call it so that I can know whether anybody is understanding or there was anybody in church eh? Eh? staying spiritually straight that is the theme then we handled a topic How to, to prevent spiritual defection. Defection. We defect. We talk about ODM and PLU. Defection. We said that for, you know, we said that it is important. There are some things that are important. For example, who you are is very important. We are the idea of what you are is very important. We give another some idea. Now, which is which? We say it. The devil is not afraid of the president of the Republic of Kenya, who he is. The devil is not scared of how much you have because of who you are. Ati, you know, maybe Baba Yangu. You know, see, I told you one time people would be afraid of me because my, my father is Mokai. Little did I know they were afraid of the PPO for the Rift Valley, not me, not my father, not Francis, was the PPO for Rift Valley. So everywhere I went and I said, My name is so and so Mokai. People would, uh, you know. Oh, now when you walk then I will say diversion. You know it makes things so bad, isn't it? Trying to tell people who I am, so that now teacher, teacher. Teach. But we discovered the devil because he's not afraid of who I am. What the devil is afraid of is what I am. I am saved. I am sanctified. I am secure. And you know when you are secure then. You are safe. It is the people that are not secure. It is the people that don't know who, uh, who, what they are. People who pride themselves with who they are and forget that the devil, the enemy of our faith, actually only wants to target us because of what we are. The second thing we discover is that the, the devil wants to knock you down on what you have. What I have is what the devil wants to trick me. Every heresy that comes to us comes targeting what I am and targeting what I have. It is very, very important for us to know that. That if I confess what I am, then the devil hears then he will manipulate that. But when I say what I am and I believe what I am, then the devil, no way. The devil cannot get me on that point. So we discovered that. Today we want to look at number two and we are calling it how to escape spiritual discipline. This morning we are going to continue the study in the book of Jude on stay spiritually straight. How do we escape or how do I escape the spiritual discipline? And maybe for me to understand what Jude is trying to talk to us about, let's look and read Jude 5 to 7. Jude 5 to seven. Because Jude at this verses, he goes back into the Old Testament. He goes back into the Old Testament and says, but I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, 
but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains and a darkness for the judgment of the great day. Verse number seven. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to this have been given to themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh are set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Warnings, warnings are good. Sidio, warnings are good. But a lot of us, we don't heed warnings. Even over speeding, how many of us over speed and we know you can be arrested? Be honest. I'm one of them. But my prayer is for Squibble. <laughs> you know, I was telling someone, one time I carried young pastors. Uh, regional overseers, they were young actually, young, they were all in their 40s, young 40s, you know, tax, we call them young tax. And uh, we were going to like talk talk with them, and so we left them early, so we took the like talk talk route. If you have, if, if there is a good route, the like talk talk. Barabara, hey, watch out. So they are, they are uh, uh, reverence, they, they asked me, Bishop, by the time we hit 240, they were so quiet that I stopped. I said, Of course, even me, I knew anything, even a little bad. Crossing would have caused her an accident that would have wondered, you nini. But I was proving a point. <laughs> the same thing is true. A lot of us, we try to prove a point. The warning is there, but we want to prove a point. You see, eight killed, we know it. But people want to prove a point. Of a speeding kills, but we want to prove a point. Now that you are overtake driver and a fry See, I told you when I was coming from Mombasa, the repeat one kagari kegine. Kafix. Actually count on what water on the Yangaria. Water. Water water. But anyway, literally they know that to Kianza Kupanda Milima, it our Peter Uko Milima too, and that's what happened actually. But then the point was, at a little bit of Peter Nilwangaria. Now you see, the point I'm bringing to you is that you try to prove a point. Are you getting it? You try to prove a point. And it is by proving that point that we find ourselves in various challenges and difficulties. But warnings are supposed to help us so that we can be safer. And that's why Jude is telling us that it is good for you to be careful because judgment is going to come. Discipline will happen. Anybody who is evil, immoral, judgment will come. It might not even appear now. I normally tell people this. You can continue sinning now. And it not, might not happen in your generation. But I tell you, your children will pay for it. Your children's children will pay for it. This country, we look at the newspapers. We see men that stole in this country. They lived very well, but they died. What is happening with your children today? Because it is recorded. If you want your children to live well, live well yourself. The warnings are for us so that we can live well. Iba, na watoto wako, watapata shida ya wizi. Watapata karama ya wizi. So I told you, this generational issue, I think I shared here to so this church is so dynamic, I better repeat it again. Na mtu wa kizeeka na rudia na hadithi baka na uliza hiyo hadithi dilitoa. One of our churches in Kampala, 
Deliverance Church, Kampala. This is the story that was given by their overseer. He was trying to help us see how generational curses follow. So there was a woman that was going to get married. A lady that was going to get married. And this lady that was going to get married went home so that she can let the parents know about the final touches of the wedding and the shoes and so on. So when she went, she met a boyfriend that they were friends when they were toddlers. That night, they messed themselves. So she went back and she got married. But the child she got was not the husband's child. So after years, she felt she needed to go home and ask the mother what to do. Because the conviction was there. When she went home, she asked the mother, Sasa, kuna kitu kilitendeka, nilipo kuja, nilipo kuja, unajua ule kijana ye, bas, ule mtoto duwake. Eh, sasa, tutamambia ni, sasa nae mama akamambia usiseme. Kwa sabu ya tarewe, kasiwa baba yako. Lakini tuende kwa show show, tukamambie. Tukamulizo toma. Walipo enda kwa show show na hizu wakamambia, hata wewe, siwa baba yako. Jude is trying to warn us that in these last days we need to be careful warnings. We take warnings as warnings. And warnings are to save us. Warning is to save us. Warnings are to save us. I say again, warnings are to save us. They are not to destroy us. And that's why he says, even the children of Israel, when the Lord delivered them, Actually, I'm doing the book of Numbers, and I was, actually, I'm in the place where, what is happening in the book of Numbers at this point is where God has told the children of Israel, they will not enter. And he has told them to turn around Mount Sinai. And he has said, none of them will go. Anybody above 25 will not enter. I will destroy all of them. Their carcasses will be all over the place. This is the same God who said, I'm going to deliver you. If you obey me, I'm going to deliver you. These are the same people after they crossed Jordan, they sang a song actually. They said the rider and the horse have been consumed with the sea. So they said, we are saved. These are the same people that God provided meat, chicken meat, every day. Bread every day. These are the same people. But they got to a place that they did not hear God. They did not obey God. They did not trust God. I'm saying Jude is trying to tell us that we hear him, we obey him, we trust him, and our life will be saved. And we are going to evade or escape the discipline that is going to come. Because discipline is going to come. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, yeah. discipline, yeah. it yeah. You know, sometimes some of the, the, the some of the, the sermons we we prepare to come and preach. Sometimes we change them along the way. You know why we change them? Because of you. Because you might not say amen. And I want amen. You know, I want an amen so that I can get some excitement. But the truth of the matter is, the wages of sin. Death. But the gift of God is in our life. Through whom? So we know it. And we have to tell people that is the way it is. That is the way it is. In life, some people can't be a good example to follow. And that is the truth. They are not good examples for us to follow. So they end up being a horrible warning for us to avoid, because we cannot follow. For example, how many men here who are full of the Holy Ghost would like to imitate a man of God called Solomon? How many men? You want to marry a thousand women? How many men here 
want to imitate David even. How many? There are some examples of people that they are not good examples. Actually, those examples, we should avoid them. Bless the name of the Lord. So as we look at the example Jude gives us, we need actually to learn three things. And as I said again, maybe you are expecting a very theological argument. I'm not going to argue theologically here. I'm going just to bring you the fact the way they, they are. You receive them, you be saved. It will be good for you. But warnings are good. And the word of God is written for our own admission, ad admonition. The word of God is written for our rebuke, for our correction, so that we can live lives that are a good life. You know, I can stand here in this church and tell young people, don't stay with a woman in your house if you're not married. And then you look at me and you still continue to get saved. Why? Because everybody is doing it. In other words, example. But those are the examples that we need to avoid. I'll never forget one time we went to cancel a brother because the wife had called us. And I went with one of the elders. And we knew we cannot capture this person. We have to wait, hide ourselves in the neighborhood until 11.30. So when he walked in, we also walked in. And we talked. He knew we have come because he has a problem. So he looked at the wife with the eyes that says, Kunu Kanashere. <laughs> Tell them, Twina Vena, do you have any problem? And I knew the lady who had called us. She can't say anything. You know, some of you are like that. Even when Zimamoto has come, ambulance is there, the police are there. We were there. Kunu. And I said, but anyway, we told these men, with the words that I'm going to tell you, to sleep with another woman is not an achievement. To resist is an achievement. Amen. I want to say again, too, because the Koinante has come, it is in Zimamanoso, so it is not an achievement. They are there, they are all over the place. Actually, small girls, university girls, they are all over the place. To refuse to do it, that's an achievement. Amen. To watch in your computer pornographic materials mm. is not an achievement. It's not. To refuse to, that is an achievement. Amen. Amen, amen. You know, somebody asked, somebody asked, asked, uh, uh, oh, let me not, not that direction. But example, examples, there, there was this, uh, this, this, these two brothers, their father was a drunkard. And he died because of drunkenness. So the two brothers, one of them said this, I will be drinking because what my father was drinking cannot go to waste. <laughs> what an example. The other one said, never will I. It killed my father. Mm. The example was their father. Both. But warnings are supposed to help us. You may have, have, I have married people who have died in this church because of who killed me. But there is one pastor that I, who disappeared in church. I was called to go and bury. Her husband had died of it. She had it. 
she disappeared from church i was called kuja uzike mshirika wako then i inquired alikuwa ameenda wapi this is what she had said na mimi nitaua wanaume wengi iwezekana vipi then she did wasabi yeye hakusilimu so sometimes ukiona mtu amesilimu unafikiria hapo na ukimu haiendagi hivyo hapana unaweza kuwa mnono na uko so when i was buried the elder brother looked at me and said and he actually cried bishop pray pray i was a devout bishop then pastor omba huyu pepo huyu pepo nikamwambia huyo sio pepo mtu anaendaga na miguu yake miwili na pesa zake ni pepo huyo sio pepo and i can see the song that i wanted to see And I can see it as you just it goes something like this uh lord my shepherd chapters. God told Moses to select 12 leaders, 
to go spy out the land. When they returned to report what they saw, ten of them were afraid and said it was impossible to take the land because the people were too strong. But two of them, Caleb and Joshua, filled with faith and said Israel could defeat the people and take the land. What was Caleb saying and Joshua they were saying, if God has said it, I'm going to trust in him. If God has said it, I'm going to trust and believe in him. If I will escape, I have to trust God and believe him. And sometimes I have to trust him when everything is not okay. When circumstances are not good. But I will have to trust him. I have to trust him. I have to trust him. As a result, Israel did not believe God. They turned against Moses and wanted a new leader to take them back to Egypt. Moses encouraged the people to put their faith in God. But they still refused. As a result, God declared that Israel would spend the next 40 years wandering in the wilderness. And I was, as I was looking for the study, the 40 years was for the every day that the spies were in the Canaan because they were there for 40 days. So for every day they were in Canaan, seeing the promised land, the Lord gave them a whole year. So for 40 years, they walked around the wilderness. And my prayer for you, my brother, is that we will trust God so that God will not allow us to wander for too long in the wilderness. Not to wander so much where there is no the blessing that God has for us. I hear for every day the spies were gone, and that every 20 years and old I would die and not enter the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. What's the lesson here? We need to learn from this. We need to learn this, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will do what? Make your path straight or direct your path. If you are taking notes, maybe you can, this might help you. Everywhere you go know this. Always trust your known God with your unknown future. Yani, uyu mungu wako unae mdua. Unaweza mtumainia. Maisha yako ya usoni. Mbayo, we Always trust your known God with your unknown future. Hebrews 10 and 23, if you can put it, we can read all of us together. Hebrews 10, 23. Let's read it together. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. We can trust God to do what he has promised. First John 5, 10, those who don't believe God have made God what? A liar. Those who don't believe God, they have made God a liar. God who promised to give them victory, they made him a liar. Hebrews 3.12 So brothers and sisters, be careful that none of you has an evil and believing heart that will turn you away from the living God. The question here is, does your life seem to be going round in circles? Does it seem like your life is going nowhere? Like you are wandering? Then you need to ask yourself, what is it that I am not willing to trust God for? Because there must be something wandering around in circles. Because faith will keep you spiritually straight with God. But a lack of faith will keep you wandering. The second thing is I must submit to God's authority. And I tell you, it's a bit harder. But I must submit. If I'm going to escape, if I'm going to escape God's discipline and wrath, then here or now, 
I must submit to God's authority. Verse number 6, it says this, And the angels, who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their own home, this he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chain for judgment on the great day. Here in this passage, Jude uses the example of the fallen angels to teach us that the need to submit ourselves to God's authority. God's authority. God's authority is good. You know, a story is, is, is given of this man who was driving a Ford, Ford in the U.S. many years ago. And as he drove the Ford, he had a mechanical problem, so he, he stopped on the road. And another old man came with another Ford and stopped. And they asked the gentleman, the young man, what is wrong with your car? He said, well, I don't know, but the, 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 the fire, the firing order is not working very well. So the guy looked at this old man, the old man said, can I, can I help you? He, he said, but I have tried it, you're an old man, I'm looking for a mechanic to come and repair it. The, the old man said, can I, please, can I? So the young man said, after all, what am I going to lose? Jaribu. So the guy went, removed the, the plugs, cleaned the plugs. Those are the days of the plugs. Eh? Cleaned the plugs, returned them. And asked the young man, can you fire it now? And it worked. The young man asked, and who are you, sir? He said, I'm Mr. Ford. <laughs> you know, many times you and I, we don't trust God, we are stuck, and he wants to help us. But we are telling him, he wins under Baira. He was a Kamawewe. He, our Dwagi. And we are telling the King of Kings, the creator of everything. We need to tell him, come and do it. He wants to help us. He wants to help us. I must submit myself to God's authority. Instead of sticking with the authority and responsibility God gave to them in heaven, the angel deliberately turned against God. That seemed almost inconvincible to me. Imagine experiencing heaven and being in the presence of God and deciding to rebel against God. So when did that happen? If you look at Ezekiel 28 verse 13 to 17, it will tell you something. And it says, when the archangel Lucifer rebelled against God because of his pride, that in turn led to a full-fledged angelic rebellion in heaven, which is found in the book of Revelation, again 12, verse 3 to 4. Satan eventually led a third of the angels in heaven to follow him. As a result, they were bound in darkness awaiting judgment. The lesson to be learned from this event is that God will not tolerate anyone who rebels against his authority. Even for you that are married, God has put some order. If you rebel against the order of God, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a bishop or what. If you rebel against your marriage cannot stand. But if we honor him, he is the order of marriage. Actually, of fact, somebody said it yesterday that in um, Genesis it starts with Adam and Eve, marriage, and it ends in Re Revelation with the marriage of the Lamb. So the whole process, so marriage is key. If you rebel against God, against His authority, if He will judge angels who, in many ways, are higher than men then we will suddenly judge and discipline those who rebel against him and against his authority. James 1 and verse 21 says, So get rid of every filthy habit and no wicked conduct. And then he says, Submit to God and accept the word that he plants in your heart which is able to save you. Or if you read in the New King James, it's therefore lay aside all filthiness and of a, of a flow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save 
your soul. So the way to escape God's judgment or discipline in your life is by submitting to him. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But it starts by saying, Submit yourself. You have to be submissive somewhere. Because you don't just resist. You know some of us want to resist. But it says, first of all, submit. Because when you are submitting, then you can resist. Because the devil is afraid of that authority that you have submitted with. Have you, have, you, have you noticed how some people's hair is very manageable and other people's hair seems to have a wheel of its own? <laughs> I even did not believe I would grow hair myself. And even one time I used to pride myself, but you know what? It's because I never shaved it. But when I started shaving, it had worn in a cutter. There are some of you here who are saying, Yeah, I'm going to cut it. 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 But i God help me to submit to you. God help me to follow and obey you. God give me strength to fight the urge to do things my own way, so that I can submit myself to God. So the question is, is there some area of your life that you, you still haven't yielded to God? Is there something you are holding back from Him and haven't surrendered to His will? If so, you need to submit it to Him now, in order for you to escape the discipline and the judgment that will come our way. Finally, Finally, Jude 1 verse 7 says, In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example for those who suffer the punishment of eternal life. So number three, I must live by God's spirit. This last example Jude gives to us on how to escape God's judgment or discipline is the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. This city serves as an example that God judges sin. The story about Sodom and Gomorrah. You know it's found in the book of Genesis, chapter 18 and 19. Long there as the Bible uh, is studied. But this was ju not just an occasional sin that Sodom and Gomorrah committed against God. It was a habitual practice or way of life. Now, I hope you're getting, you're listening and hearing what I'm saying. This was not a one touch. This was habitual. Something that you did. Sin was so prevalent in these cities that it was there. And God is even saying, if we find the ten righteous people there, can there be? But God is, God is telling Abraham, Hakuna. Because even for Lot and his wife, Nineema. Now, hata wasiano alipo ambiwa watoke, wale boyfriend is out, wa ubeza wa likata. Utoka. That how sinful that place was. And we are getting there in this country. To be a virgin boy or a virgin boy, it's like people wonder. We are scared, isn't it? Are you okay up here? Because everybody is talking how the holiday was. You know, I enjoyed it. It was this with that boy, it was this with that girl. You know, I enjoyed it. So when you look like you are lost, but I would say, get lost that way. Because you're going to find the grace of God. It's actually an achievement. 
to hold it until the day of your marriage. You know. Oh my goodness. You can even pride yourself. The soul ties. Zima is made to fuga ni nyingi. Una mapiku kila mahali. You know, ata ata ukirimukuo. Just like God judge Sodom and Gomorrah, He will judge us. The reason why we sometimes have no self control is because we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to control our lives. The Holy Spirit to control our lives. And I tell you what, if you are conscious, is alive, it will always tell you when you are falling into sin. But if your conscience is dead, after the walk, you say, Mama, my conscience is clean. Now, the father loved it too, because I'm happy, he shall go for me. I really what I'm saying. So sometimes, oh, my conscience, which one? Is it the one which is dead or the life conscious? Because if your conscience is alive, after the walk, you may be a mere nakumi. Roma nakumbia, na hapa, na zambi. You know when we go to the encounter, some of the people wonder. Hata hawa watu wamepereka wengine kwa encounter. Karanasi yao ya dhambi nao ina mambo wa mejaza jaza. Wani dhambi hizi ninyiki na mdalani? Because the spirit tells you, halafu, na halafu, na pale jini. Na ulipoona, ulifikiri yaki, you know. Allow the spirit of God to guide and help you. Usikubali kukaa bila roho. Kwa sababu kukaa bila roho ni kama kuwa kiosi ambayo watu wanaingia na matope, wametoka choo na matope, haina. Unatua kuna hoteli higinda hata ukija. Amen? Amen. Kwa sababu ni safi, unaanza kutupanguzi ya uko. Unakakako kufu. Kini kuna kiosi higine kwa sababu hata haina mkeka na haina nini ni huru huru Kwanza kama ni hakule kwetu Amen Tunawekana mura Kwa hivyo unaigia na matoka yaka beba mura ukitoka Galatians 5.16 says So I say live by spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature the only to es the way to escape the judgment of God here on earth is to allow the Spirit of the Lord to guide us. Then we will not gratify the flesh. If you stay in step with the Spirit, you will be out of step with the world. I like that. If you stay in step with the Spirit, you will be out of step in this world. So you need to stay in step. Galatians 5.25 If we are living now by the Holy Spirit, let us follow the Holy Spirit leading in every part of our lives. Romans 8.5 Those who live according to the sinful nature have their mindset on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. That is in the new NIV. NIV. And you know, God is not a respecter of any persons. He does not respect his own unbelieving people. He destroyed them. He didn't respect his own angels who rebelled against him. He threw them into hell. Neither did he respect the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah who sinned against him. He destroyed them. What makes you think that you're going to escape it? What? What makes you think you're going to escape it? So Jude is trying to tell us, God will not respect us if we continue sin. Remember what he said when we read verse number five. Though you already know this, actually, I needed to have said the same. Though you already know this. Because this is not new. Though we already know this, that the wages of sin is death. Oh, we already know this. We have all heard the stories of Israel. 
We have all heard the stories of the angels and Sodom and Gomorrah before. But just because you know what the Bible says, doesn't mean you're doing what it says. Just because you know what the Bible says, doesn't make you example for God's judgment. He will judge you if you don't live right with Him. I want to ask the final question it's here. Is there some sin that's keeping you from living your life for God? What is it? If there is sin in your life, you need to confess it to God and ask Him to forgive you. Because if you don't, you will not escape God's judgment or discipline. Thus says the Lord, I have a Father. The Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for Jude who comes to us and tells us that the devil wants to destroy what we are. We are children of the most holy God. He wants to destroy what we have, the faith that we have, the peace that we have, the love that we have, the security that we have. He wants to destroy that. But Lord God, there are men and women who have listened to me today and their life will never be the same again. They will run away from the wrath of God. They will disappear from the render of the devil and get to the submission of God. They will submit themselves to God. Well, when their eyes are closed like that, let me try to, 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 to sing another song and I pray that you hear the words because it's an old old song that we used to sing a long time ago
things in your life that you have refused to believe? Is there something Lord that has told you and you have refused to trust Him? Could you tell Him today to forgive you? Could you lift up your voice to Him and tell Him, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Lord, cleanse me. I want to trust you. I want to believe in you. Whatever your promise, I know you're going to bring to pass in the name of Jesus. I want to trust you for my life. I want to trust you for my education. I want to trust you for my family. I want to believe you. And the promises that you have made, the words that you have spoken about families, about my family, about life, about my work, I want to trust in you. I want to believe in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. Oh, blessed be your name.